What's up guys, it's Drag, and this is the Dominator, or the, it's not the Dominator, it's the Dominator or the something else, depending upon what uh, country you are in when you hear about it. Uh, so we're going to say the things that we do like about it first. So the things that we do like has this full uh, hand guard on it. I think that that's nice. I like the light stippling on the handle. I think that that's comfortable. And that's it. Um, this was sent to me. Uh, by WorkerKit.com, which is not actually Worker. It's uh, the Lytake kind of website to sell Worker stuff. Um, and I, I don't want to sound like... There's always this weird toss-up, right? Where I'm very grateful that they sent it over to me so that I could get my hands on it and get real experience with it and provide you with an expert-level opinion. Um, I wish it had been designed better, and while they're going to expect a good review telling you to go buy one of these, uh, I feel that my integrity and responsibility to you guys, which is the reason that I don't always say that everything is awesome, is far more valuable. So uh, I think that multi-stage flywheels are really dumb in the first place. In a world where you can get pretty much every level of flywheel performance out of a single stage, I think that the added stress to your darts of dual stage, and I think that the catastrophic uh, failures that happen when darts get jammed in dual stage is already pretty dangerous. Um, I like it when they're spaced out just enough that the, the failures are a little less like, I guess what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cover myself here and say that the Leviathan kit I think is very cool. And I like it predominantly because it's so easy to remove that core if you want to. This is a three stage flywheel setup and that's how it's designed to be built. And that's one too many already and realistically two too many. So I think that that's kind of disastrous. Uh, and interestingly enough, this won't take any magazine other than these dual stacked magazines. So like, yeah, it's a double stack Nerf mag. There's a reason that we've never done double stack Nerf mag. Double stack. Blah, 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 blah. Um, we've never done this before because Nerf rounds are squishy. Unlike real steel rounds, which have cartridges made of brass or steel. And that means that they're compressible. And so they're going to jam in this a whole bunch. So uh, another thing that I don't like about this three stage flywheel system, and I'm not going to accuse them of making this gimmick specifically for this reason, but it's three hearts that you have to put in it like a demon. Um, and the three hearts are all expensive. So that's six motors, three cages. Well, I mean, six motors, three cages, a couple of extra wheels, six flywheels. Now, they didn't even send me all the things necessary to build this. So when they sent it over at first, they were just like, here's the blaster. And I'm like, great, I can't do anything with that. So I'm not going to make a video. I'm sorry. And then they were like, no problem. We'll send you everything you need. Apparently, everything that I need was a magazine, three cages, and a flywheel. Uh, not a flywheel. I was hoping this was going to be six flywheels. It's not six flywheels. It's a full auto kit. You know what makes it more dangerous? and more likely to jam your triple stage flywheel blaster, shoving a bunch of darts into it rapidly. Boom, 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 means that there's a chance for it not to have fully, oh, I mean, there's just so many things that could go wrong. So I'm going to tell you what I will do, and then I'm going to tell you what I won't do. I will provide you the most and possibly only honest review of this product so that you know whether or not it's for you. What I won't do is I won't install a full auto kit into something that barely has enough battery room to power two motors. Because again, this is not a large battery tray. I'm going to open it up real quick. It looks to be the same size as a swordfish's battery tray. So we can kind of cut in here. It's a little bit bigger, but that's still just double A sized. Um, they do include this little cord here because I guess they figured out that nobody's using double A's on these. But unfortunately, it's not a standard LiPo connector. It's like not an XT60 and I don't think it's a Dean's. It might be a Dean's. It looks similar to my Airsoft stuff. Um, I use exclusively XT60s. I think that they're the best for our hobby. Um, We've got a slightly expanded battery tray. So, I mean, I guess more power to them. And then two of these things. I'm sure I could figure out what these things are for. Oh, these things are specifically... So, I'm going to take one of my criticisms back. These are clearly plates. You set the plates inside here. And then instead of taking its proprietary magazine, which is half of the gimmick, it will take a regular sized magazine. I'm going to be testing this and building it and proving to you kind of how it works 
with this. So we'll test this so we won't install these. And I'm going to put a lipo in it. Uh, may God have mercy on our souls. The one thing that I do want to mention is that certainly with a full auto kit, uh, with a full auto kit, this is seven full motors. If you're using any sort of motors that are proper and drawing enough current to generate the RPMs to handle a three-stage setup, since it's a three-stage setup, you're probably already over-volting your motors, doing something like fang revamps on threes, honey badgers on threes, or what have you. You are pulling so many amps out of your battery for seven motors that like, you are already running the danger of overdrawing your LiPo and, well... In conclusion, I think that there are some fundamental design issues with this, but we're going to be as honest and as fair as we possibly can be, set our engineering degree aside for a moment, and really crack it open and try, try to build it properly, despite the fact that we, in order to do that, are still going to have to spend $60 of our own on motors and flywheels to do so, because they only sent cages. I guess we'll use their cages. Alrighty guys, just brief segment here showing off the howlers and our three-stage setup. I think we might be the first people to actually do a proper three-stage setup on one of these. Don't quote me on that, like, but we, we did it. Uh, we had to find our own screws to like lock these in, but we used their cages. Of note, if you come in here, you can see that the way that this is beveled and coming off of the dual stack mag, it's actually necessary to use their cage. At least for your first stage, which is wild. There's nothing to connect these two, so you just kind of have to pray. Now, luckily, the howlers, if you take a look down in here, the howlers are concave. So they have great concavity, and they should serve to guide it all the way through. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to point out. This is not a, like, hate on worker video. This is simply a, some concepts are bad, so the kind of amperage that we're drawing through this actually just turbo fried this switch. So you can see where I had to splice it off and it no longer clicks. That's because it's now always open. Everything else just comes up and through. And again, we used our own XT60. The only thing we haven't done yet is uh, pull our heat shrink up and over and get that ready to go. Again, we're leaving it semi-auto to minimize disasters. So we're gonna slap it all together now, uh, put back in the plugs up here at the top, and we'll show you what it looks like in the workshop and hopefully how it performs. All right, so it's super cold out here, but we are gonna finish up this entire video outside just so that we don't have to set up the studio again. You guys can see, our triple flywheel setup fit in here nicely. It holds the 132 size motors and it would hold 180 size motors, which is relevant because frequently you're gonna be overvolting. Now, whew, um, I do wanna mention this is not ideal. You can see there's a slight split. I've screwed it in anyhow to hold this battery in. This is a bolt. Uh, by Turnigy, a Turnigy Bolt 3S, uh, and it's just enough that its burst discharge should be enough to handle all three or all six of these motors at load. Should. It's technically overdrawing it just a little bit, but uh, this is a bolt battery. It should have enough capacity to handle this, and yet it still doesn't fit in the expanded battery tray. These are all just like me kind of validating that the things that I said in that first segment have real like merit and staying power. Now, we loaded this up with mostly new darts from our test uh, recently. This is the 40 round mag. I do just want to mention once these things are loaded, they're sweet. If it works, it's sweet. Like you could store two of these instead of four of the 22s. Now, four 22s is technically more darts. It's 88 darts as opposed to 80. That's eight more shots. But uh, depending upon how you want to play, this is only one reload in that scenario. Now, I only have one and there's no hot swapping here. Like it only, it either takes regular mags or it takes the double stack mags. We pulled this chronograph out here to see what our three stage setup does, but it's going to sound like a train. Like it's very, very loud with the triple stage setup going through here, but we're gonna see what all of our error, <laughs> all of our merits, uh, all of our efforts and our $60 in components that we threw into this have garnered us in terms of performance. Let's go. 135, 140, 44, 54, 98. So I'm just gonna point out that like that's all across the board. That's 111 showing, it did get up to 154. And it's because this is a highly inconsistent system. And it's also just, it's hot. It's running really hot. And the way that it peels darts off the top, like luckily it did fire one dart per trigger pull, but I'm going through that slowly. Let's just see real quick, not firing over the chronograph this time. We're just gonna fire off into the wild blue coal 
wet Georgia weather here and see kind of how this performs. But overall, it's got good weight to it. Like this is not just a diss on this product. Like I applaud Worker for trying new things, especially trying new things in injection molding. Like that is not a cheap branch to walk out on. Like seriously, I applaud the innovation. It's just this is a very expensive build at this point. By the time you've bought the shell, the magazine, the internals, three cages, six motors, and six wheels. Like it's a lot of money. You're talking about like you could have built a Strife that would consistently perform at this level with a single cage, more reliably fitting an entire battery. Man, it's cold, let's fire this thing. It's something that's not gonna be evidenced on video, but some of these darts are flying wildly this way or wildly this way, and I just anticipate that it's the stress of being flung through three separate sets of concentric flywheels, like boom, 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 boom. Um, of note, we've done most of our video, and I think we still have 15 darts left in here. Let's pound those out real quick and see if we can't get an error in feeding the magazine. While going semi-auto, we have yet to have an issue in feeding, so maybe there aren't problems with this magazine. However, these are all relatively new darts with stiff head type, in terms of both waffles and accufakes. Anyway. All right, okay. And so in our last firing series there, we had one trigger pull that did not eject a dart, which means that we slipped, but then I guess by pulling it again, we did correct, and that's not the end of the world. It's not ideal for HVZ, but like for a Nerf 4, that would not get you killed. It wouldn't be the difference, I guess. Like that's fine and well and good. It's freezing. That's my review of the Dominator or whatever it's being called right now, the Conqueror. I, I don't know what this blaster is necessarily named. I think that there are a couple of like logistics issues with it. I think that it's far more expensive than it seems at first, but a comfortable shell, a cool profile. It's still asymmetrical, which drives me up a wall. If it was symmetrical, there would be plenty of room for a big enough battery on one side, uh, probably this side. Um, but it is a valid entrant into our hobby. It is cool in a lot of ways. And if you want to do a three-stage anything, I will admit that if you... I don't personally subscribe to multi-stage flywheels, um, but if you do, this is the best way to do it. Like, this is for sure the easiest way with spots allocated all along the way to do a two-stage. You could do a two-stage first and third position with a large space in between, connecting those with barrel material. You could do a two-stage up close and personal here, or you could do the three-stage just like this. Like, this certainly has merit if afterburners are what you're after. Burner. If you want to pick up any of these components, components that I use are in the Amazon link and they go to support the channel, and the components that were sent to me will be linked on workerkit.com if you want to find exactly what I used for this build. However, uh, your mileage may vary. Highly variable system. As always, much love. Nerf on. Drek out. Uh -huh.